Okay, so it is my personal opinion, whenever actually watching a review of a smartwatch, a smartphone, a laptop, that the most interesting thing to look out for is not really the specs or, uh, you know, the numbers, surely they tested it, but what really is interesting, because those numbers you can check out for yourselves on the various online website, the specs website, what's interesting is the story behind the computer. So what do we have here? This is the KD Slimbook and it is a laptop not made by KD but made by Slimbook in partnership with KD which means that it actually has KD Neon out of the, out of the box which is you know from KD meant to be the experience of the vanilla default KD software although I'll get to that in a sec and it has really proven to be a valuable partnership because it has lasted years and has received many upgrades throughout the years. So how is actually the machine? And of course, I speak about KD Plasma a lot. So what we're looking for here is more on the hardware side of things. So let's start off with that. Now, of course, this video is currently being recorded as I speak on this computer. You know, nice thing. Let's actually start with uh, the exterior shell, which is a nice aluminum build, which means that this thing is actually extremely light. And this does actually matter because usually when I try out computers, you know, I uh, take them, I do some test tasks like doing video editing or I developed a bit for KD stuff, I do a merge request, I do some bug fixing, this kind of things. So I actually get a feeling of, on how the machine is. And just as a bit of context, this is my personal computer. It's a Dell XPS, it's one of those thin and lights. So, you know, for my personal computing, well, that one isn't an easy one to beat, right? That said, when I actually started using the KD Slim Slimbook, I, I never stopped. <laughs> In the last uh, 17 days, everything I've done, video editing, KD development, uh, playing chess, anything, everything has been done on the KD Slimbook. Not because I forced myself to do it, but because it felt the most natural. For a variety of reasons, I'll get into it. And why it's so important for this machine to be light, why it made, what was so important for me is that the first week of, of October, I flew to Barcelona to do a whole week of uh, KDE related things because there was the KDE Academy, the in-place conference where all KDE developers were um, meet. And not only that, but you know, actually the Slimbook CEO was also there. They had a stand and they partially um, finance this kind of things. So it was nice to meet them there and to travel. This was the best machine, like hands down, if you want to have something on your backpack with a lot of computing power and everything, it's gotta be this. So I've actually spent an entire week in Barcelona just with this computer and it has worked perfectly. So it is light, which is important. It is also very sturdy. If I actually try to flex some of the parts like the keyboard, the touchpad, it does not flex. The only part that seem more uh, fragile is the top of the screen, which is usually a bit more fragile in all laptops. In here particularly, I do see it flexing significantly, but it does not seem to be any kind of issue if you treat it with respect as you should. It also does not take any kind of fingerprints around this other Dell XPS da does actually get some fingerprints around it and it does not get many um, scratches. They, it did get a couple on the bag whilst I was traveling to Barcelona. You know, I was, I threw it in my bag, <laughs> not, not, it, not literally. Uh, so it does have a couple of scratches on the back, back but uh, that is it and it's overall very solid. So the build quality here is really nice. If we take it on the back, we can see that there are a lot of screws that you can take off to actually open this thing. And on one of them, you actually get this little penguin with security seal written on it. And you might wonder whether actually opening the laptop um, destroys your warranty. So I actually asked this, the Slimbook guys was at Barcelona, since I had this opportunity to, to talk to them, why not? And they told me that if I understood this correctly, it doesn't, you can indeed open this. However, it is currently a 
safety measure that they take and they said that they would like again if i understood this correctly in the future to actually change the change this and allow the user maybe when they have more documentation regarding this i don't know to actually open it without having any security seal on uh, the screws now i owe again this i want to stress how important it is to get get it right so dell xps again i'm going to bring this up often you've got a usb-c here and a USB-C here, and that's it. <laughs> and initially, I did not think that was going to be an issue, but it is. You gotta live with these dongles to keep around that I actually keep on losing. And if you don't buy them carefully, which I didn't, they are not going to support 4K 60 Hertz um, display output. This one doesn't, meaning that my monitor over there is useless with my Dell XPS. Instead, over here, We've got three USB 3, a 3.1, sorry, two 3.1s and a 2.0. But we also have a USB-C on the other side, which supports up to two monitors of output and power input if necessary. And then of course, you also get Ethernet and HDMI output up to 4K 60 Hertz. And of course, you also get a micro SD. So, that's a lot and that literally means that I can put it there and plug it into my monitor without any kind of dongle and without having to worry about losing any frequency in um, display refresh rate or quality. This microphone as well, it's still USB 3 which means I keep uh, have to bring in around a dongle every time I want to use this with my Dell XPS. But with this one, I don't have to, which is a great plus because I keep on losing dongles. It's incredible. They, they disappear into nothing. Let's talk about the keyboard. And again, I'm going to cover slightly the fact that I went with, to Barcelona with this computer. And the first day we were going to eat pizzas with some KD developers. And I mentioned that I had the slim book with me, actually, I brought it uh, in the pizzeria with me, obviously, obviously. And like two, three of them were just like, okay, can we try out the keyboard? Uh, apparently, apparently the new keyboard is significantly improved compared to the last one, which I haven't tried, so I can compare, but I can say that it is a very good keyboard. I have nothing to complain about. I am able to reach my full typing speed with this one, which is around 115 words per minute. So you are able to reach that kind of speed without issues. The keys feel good. And if you actually press on the sides or the very border of a key, you still manage to get the input correctly. It has a new improved uh, black look compared to the previous machine, which was white. And in theory, that's prettier. Personally, uh, I don't like it, but I've heard that a lot of people prefer this one, so fine. But what a black keyboard actually means is that it's much easier to see the backlighting. This has uh, backlighting, obviously. It has three modes and even the one of the modes is off, obviously. And the middle one, which is the lighter one, is still perfectly viable even if there's light around you. Of course, being this, the KDE Slimbook, it has a KDE logo instead of the Windows logo on the meter key, which is fantastic. Now, it is aligned to the control function and alt buttons, which are on the <laughs> bottom part of the key, which means that the plasma key feels off center compared to the meter key as a whole, which is something that I'm not super happy <laughs> about, but that's a level of nitpicking that I'm obviously not going to reach. The touchpad has a very nice feature on the top left. You have a LED LED that shows you whether the touchpad is, an, is enabled or disabled. And you can actually disable the touchpad just by double tapping on the LED. I need to talk about this slightly. So it has happened to me rather frequently that whilst typing, I accidentally press the LED and uh, the touchpad turns off and I do not realize what has happened. This is because out of the box, this does not come with a notification that tells you that the touchpad has been deactivated. However, it is very easy to install it. You just have to add the Slimbook repository and install Slimbook. This is something that I discussed with the Slimbook people um, at the KD Academy. If I understood this correctly, it seems like this was meant to be enabled by default, but for this particular machine, it wasn't. 
So be careful that if the touchpad seems to not be working anymore out of the box, you just have to double tap on the LED top left. And in general, it does seem a bit too easy to accident accidentally enable while tipping, typing. The touchpad is pretty big. It takes any space that it could take. So it's as big as could be. And it's also very easy to click on the bottom. If you're trying to click on the top, it is actually very hard. And on the very top part of the touchpad, it is completely impossible. So you do feel that this is not the same touchpad quality that you get on something like a Dell XPS. I can still click here, but there's also, you know, 600 euros of difference. So the display, one of the most important things in my opinion, it has a lot of good things and some bad things. So firstly, it is a full HD resolution, which in my opinion is the perfect resolution. If you go any higher, higher than full resolution, full HD, sorry, that means that A, you're losing battery over nothing because at a 14 inch, in a 14 inches laptop, you are not going to notice the difference in resolution realistically from any distance. And also it means that you'll have to opt into some scaling and usually that leads some potentially bugs, sadly. <laughs> So personally, I think that one to one full HD on 14 inches is just the perfect resolution. Less would be not enough and more would be too much. However, it is 16 by nine, which is the wrong aspect ratio <laughs> because I've decided. So I think personally, I think that 16.10, which we are starting to see on more and more laptops is a significant uh, step forward and you do not realize it until you use it. But actually having those hundred of pixels on the bottom allows you to better see what you're reading. If you're browsing the internet, as an example, it gives you more space to breathe. So personally, I would like to see in the future a 16 by 10 aspect ratio display. It is a glassy display, display treated against um, sun reflectiveness and, and I've actually used it under the sun. If you go back a couple of uh, videos and watch at the videos that I've recorded was that KD Academy talking about the KD Academy. You can notice that I'm outside under the sun, still recording and still using this laptop. Obviously, I was still able to do that without any issue. I also edited videos under the sun, no issue whatsoever. It is not as bright as could be. I've done some comparison compared to the other devices that I have, even phones, it is less bright than them. However, it does have a full sRGB 100% coverage, which is nice. And it's still perfectly be completely usable under sunlight. But I mean, now I'm in Sweden. I haven't seen sunlight in months. Last thing about uh, the screen is that again, Dell XPS, one thing that you immediately notice are the bezels and using a Dell XPS kind of, kind of makes you used to having very small bezels. And from this side of view, actually the Slimbook does not disappoint in any way. The side bezels are very small. The top one is a bit larger, but it does have the camera. So you can't really go thinner on that without losing some quality. The bottom one is a bit bigger. It has the Slimbook logo. I think it's fine. It totally does not look ugly compared to the Dell XPS. So fine. What about the webcam quality and the microphone quality? Well, the webcam is just at 20, uh, 720p, which is not much. It's, I guess, okay for video conferencing. Also, this is lagging so much on my... The microphone I've actually never used. I just used the external one because again, maybe it's fine for some calls, but even in like Zoom calls or Google meeting, meetings, I do want my voice to be heard correctly. So it is not something that I would attempt with this built-in microphone. So you do you. Surely the camera that's on the other more high-end computer, which is actually 1080p, if I recall correctly, should be uh, much better than this. But if you plan to do anything that involves a nice camera, this is like ideal lighting conditions. I have my lights around me and everything. Not, not good, sadly. Hardware wise, I think I covered everything. Let's talk about a couple of things in the software. I mean, let's talk about performance. 
and battery. Performance-wise, I've actually used this computer to do everything. Like I've compiled a lot. I've used video editing and I've exported videos. Never had any issue from that point of view. My <laughs> reference test being a kiddie developer is obviously how much time does this computer take to actually compile um, kiddie plasma desktop on from scratch and how much battery does it take? So I just told the computer compile everything to get plasma desktop and I've uh, unplugged battery power and it actually took one hour and 15 minutes and it has used 55% of the battery. How good bad is that for reference? Performance wise again goes along with a Dell XPS roughly took uh, the same time and this is the version with a nice seven and both of these have eight cores, 16 threads. So that is actually really good and I would expect you not to have significant issues from the performance point of view, unless you want to do some heavy gaming, I guess, or export like live editing on the 4K videos, which is something I don't do for these use cases. You are more expert than me on how to value whether a computer is able to uh, handle this kind of tasks. So again, I'm not here to give numbers that I don't have the competence to really judge. However, what I can say is that there is an improved uh, processor compared to last year uh, model. We do get the 5700U processor, which has not, maybe not like a significant step up in performance, but uh, yeah, a significant step up in battery life. And if you actually go to the KD Slimbook page, you do see that it's full of graphs showing you the increase on battery. And those numbers match mine. And actually mine are slightly more optimistic in some areas. As an example, when talking about compiling time, Slimbook uh, says that this last one hour and 45 minutes, 50 minutes, mine actually lasted longer for that whilst compiling Plasma Desktop, which is resource inter intensive. So good. <laughs> For uh, tasks like um, YouTube uh, streaming, this lasts roughly seven, uh, seven hours. Again, my numbers are slightly more optimistic than the Slimbook ones, just by 10 minutes. And for like more uh, general use cases, this can actually last to nine hours, nine hours and a half if you use it correctly. Uh, all of these tests, by the way, done with something along 50% uh, brightness on my side. Now let's talk about a couple of things about software. So firstly, Slimbook usually sells these things with some built-in software that actually helps you use these computers. As an example, usually, usually they have a battery tool that allows you to squeeze out more from the battery, but also usually you have something else that I forgot about. And I did because none of this is available out of the box on the Slimbooks. That is because you have KD Neon and you have the most vanilla KD experience out of the box. That is the idea of this machine. You can agree or disagree with this take. Now, it is very easy to add the Slimbook repository and actually test these kind of tools for yourselves. I didn't do that. What I did do is to reinstall that tool that actually allowed me to see whenever I was disabling the touchpad as an example, but it also makes sure that you can use changing the performance mode. You do have two performance modes, that is uh, silent whenever you don't want to hear the fan or performance, obviously. You do actually have a button to switch between them. Now, again, out of the box, this thing didn't work for me. I did install them. However, they have proved to be kind of un unreliable in actually providing the information whilst I was using the machine on the long run. It has happened to me very fre frequently that I try to change the performance mode to see whether it actually had any difference in tests and I couldn't see any notification regarding what was going on. So I actually couldn't know which performance mode I was on. Now I tried it again and it works now. So that's good. Their notification are, are high priority, which means that if you do receive the notification, you see it even if you have do not disturb enabled, but often I just didn't see them. So this little tool was a bit un unreliable for me. Finally, Kerry Neon. So now we are in a funny timing. 
this is no longer about Slimbook. Let's talk about what you get out of the box in terms of the operating system, which is Kidi Neon. I have to make a slight but important complaint. If you, have, if you buy this machine right now and you try it out, you will discover that it's broken, not in a way that you cannot use it, but in a way that I would personally find it extremely annoying to use. Why? Because I've used like this for like two weeks. There is this bug which has been fixed since a good week, no, more than a week, but in, in frameworks 5.99 that was released a week ago, for which the Kwin, which is the window manager and Plasma don't talk too much well um, to each other. And as an example, if you try to open kickoff, it actually opens at the center. And if you try to like change the volume, it is actually considered a window and that causes so a lot of problems and that happened. Now, as I said, it was fixed since one week ago. However, KD Neon is not updating to the latest KD frameworks. And this sadly is not the first time I've seen something like that happen. So purely on a, you know, reviewer point of view and not KD developer, but as a reviewer getting this machine, the operating system out of the box has kind of let me down. That's how it is. However, if you do not want KD Neon, they also offer the same computer without the KD logo as its own machine, not called the KD Slimbook. And uh, if I understood this correctly, they also allow you to do custom engraving, which is super cool. So you're not like stuck with KD Neon if you buy this. Personally, uh, I've always used KD Neon actually you know, as my operating system. Uh, I might switch now. Okay, so we are at the end of the video, final thoughts. This computer is going back to Slimbook because it is a review unit. And of course I do not get to keep review units. And I'm actually very sad about that, which is a good thing for the machine, right? I've actually used this as my main computer for almost a month. I will still use it for some days and it has not let me down in any aspect. And I was not coming from some random computer. I was coming from the very high end Dell XPS. And this has managed to prov provide me an excellent experience and an excellent transition. I'm super happy with the machines. There are some nitpicks that are like not that significant, such as the screen uh, <laughs> should be a 19 to 10 aspect ratio. But if you're looking for if you are looking for a Linux laptops laptop that uh, works out of the box nicely, is performant, has a very good battery life compared to the others, do your math and check out this one, <laughs> buy this one, <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, it will be sad to see this go.